Welcome back. Just before we go to sports, Justice Mojisola Olatoregun of the Federal High Court in Lagos today ordered the temporary forfeiture of 2.2 billion naira recovered from former Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Adeshola Musu to the federal government. The court handed down the order based on an ex parte application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The judge also granted an interim order for the temporary forfeiture of 190 million naira recovered from a former Nigeria Air Force Director of Finance and Budget, Air Commodore Olubwe Ngag Badebo, and another 101 million naira received from a company linked to Amosu. The EFCC is alleging that the sum is reasonably suspected to be proceeds of unlawful activities. The judge, however, directed the EFCC to publish the interim order in the national newspapers so that the respondents or anyone interested can show cause why the final order of forfeiture should not be made in favor of the federal government. The defendants were accused of using the companies to convert and conceal the money, and they have pleaded not guilty to the charges. The judge has adjourned to June the 29th. Now let's take a look at some sports news. Here's Baron Tony Oranta. Thank you, gentlemen. Welcome to Sports News. FIFA has been counting down the last 100 days until the 2018 World Cup in Russia. The moment has finally arrived. Tomorrow, the 21st edition of the world's greatest football tournament will kick off at Moscow's Luzhniki Stadium with a match between the host Saudi and Saudi Arabia. But Achilles Zakat, the resident of the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, has predicted the Russian national team will be the winner of the opening match of the World Cup. At a ceremony to make his predictions by choosing between two bowls of cat food, Achilles chose the one with the Russian flag, however, not without some hesitation. And Fernando Herrero has been t t taken charge of the Spanish national team in the wake of a shock decision to sack Julian Lopetegui on the eve of the World Cup. He was sacked earlier today for agreeing to become Real Madrid's new manager after the World Cup without notifying the Spanish FA. Herrero, who steps in for, from his role as sporting director of Spain, now has two days to prepare for the tournament opener against Portugal in Sochi on Friday evening. And the 2026 World Cup will be held in the United States, Mexico and Canada after FIFA's Congress voted today to back the Tri-Nation joint bid for the tournament. The North American bid beat the rival Morocco proposal, winning 134 votes to 65 for Morocco. The 2026 tournament will be the biggest World Cup ever held, with 48 teams playing 80 matches over 34 days. Both Mexico, 1970 and 1986, and the United States, 1994, have previously hosted World Cups. Meanwhile, FIFA President Gianni Infantino has confirmed that he will run for re-election as head of the world football governing body. Infantino said he would present his candidacy for elections taking place in Paris in June 2019. The Swiss was elected to the post in February 2016. He said his tenure had seen a significant improvement on the organization's finances. Tennis now and Roger Federer showed some rust, but the Swiss legend ultimately settled enough into his first match in nearly three months to advance into the Mercedes Cup in Stuttgart. The world number two came back home to beat home favorite Mishka Zverev, 3-6-6-4-6-2 in front of, as, an, as customary pro Federer crowd. Federer can reclaim the world number one ranking from longtime rival Rafael Nadal with a run to the championship match in Stuttgart. He will next meet Argentine Guido Pella or Indian Parnish Gurnis Nawan. With that on the countdown, continuing to the World Cup, we end on the World Sports News for today. I'm Baron Tony Ranta and Ijama will be back. Thanks, Baron. The U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the United States hopes to see major disarmament by North Korea by the end of 2020. Mr. Pompeo is in South Korea a day after the historic meeting between President Trump and the leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore on Tuesday. Pompeo said there is still a great deal of work to do with North Korea, but that the U.S. was hopeful to achieve major disarmament in two and a half years. After his meeting with Mr. Kim, President Trump declared that North Korea was no longer a nuclear threat, insisting everybody can now feel much safer. 
and talks between Italy and France have been postponed amid a row over a migrant ship. On Sunday, Italy refused to allow an NGO ship with 629 rescued migrants abroad to dock in its ports. Italy's new inter interior minister and leader of the right-wing League Party refused permission as part of a new hardline policy on migrants. He said he had asked Malta to accept the ship Aquarius, but it refused, arguing it fell under Italy's jurisdiction. Spain eventually said it will give safe harbor to the ship to avoid a humanitarian disaster. And France was the first to condemn Italy's action. President Emmanuel Macron described the Italian government's position as, quote, sickening. And the main news again. The Lagos High Court today ordered that a Danish man who allegedly killed his Nigerian wife and daughter wandered in prison. Also today, the Federal High Court sacked the senator representing Kogi East in the National Assembly, Atai Aidoko, over faulty nomination. And U.S. authorities today expressed hopes of major disarmament by North Korea by 2020. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Oyato. Do have a good night. Thank you.